Okay, so today we're going to um, look at modeling a uh, pulse rifle from Aliens, um, sort of an iconic, iconic movie prop, um, and and definitely you know it's from one of my favorite films. So uh, just this really cool design. Um, I've actually already made the pulse rifle, so I'm just going to go about um, how I um, how I created this and uh, just have some suggestions. Um, I'm going to try to keep it to about 10 or 15 minutes so we're not going to get through how to create the entire pulse rifle. Um, if anyone's interested you know I'll put up a part 2 or a part 3 to um, finish all of it but uh, I think I'm just going to cover the fundamentals here and um, and from there you can kind of work away on it um, yourself if you'd like. So. Uh, First up, so it, one of the things I learned while while making this was that uh, apparently everyone thinks that the pulse rifle is green, but it's actually not. Uh, the prop itself was like a a light brown color, but due to the lighting used in Aliens, uh, <laughs> it uh, on screen it kind of came out green. So everyone actually um, who's gone on to make a video game or or do other stuff with it has uh, kind of made that mistake where they thought that the rifle was green. Not that it's really a, a mistake, but it's just kind of interesting. Um, that, uh, yeah, it's actually brown. Looks green on screen, thanks to the lighting. Uh, next thing you know, we'll find out that Michael Bean isn't really red. Anyways, um, so, uh, yeah, so we'll just sort of cover how I went about creating this. Um, uh, I, I started with the barrel because I just started with um, what's going to appear in the background. Um, and then sort of build everything else on top of it. We can kind of get a an idea of of the outlines here, um, all the different shapes that were used to to go into this. And as you're going to see as we go through it, um, I really just ended up using a lot of rectangles. So we hit R to get our rectangle. I'm going to do the barrel first. So there's two ways you can go about this. Um, I'm going to recommend recommend a different approach than what you might think. Um, you know, you can start off with the barrel uh, vertical or horizontal, and your instinct might be to start off with the horizontal barrel because that's how it's going to end up. But um, what I like to do is I like to uh, actually do it vertical for anything that has a gradient. So I'll show you why in a second. So we turn it into a gradient. I hit G to get our gradient options. We add in our extra um, extra point in order to get this uh, line of light across. So we select that, lighten it. Uh, the edges we darken. And there we go. So we've got it. Uh, also the rectangle settings, I had a bit of a rounded edge, which I think is good. I don't think it's good if it just comes to a sharp point like that, so I like that rounded edge to it. Um, I sort of cut off the edges, my original one, which we'll get to in a moment, um, just because it doesn't, doesn't really make sense to really have a lot of hard, um, sharp points on an object. Um, but I like going about it this way first, and then rotating it 90 degrees and then using that as the barrel. I don't like uh, just sort of starting off with this horizontal one because we do a gradient now and we have to do this step where we swing the edges of the gradient around and then we create our extra point make that light darker top and bottom you know in in either case we're talking about an extra step um, that you don't have to do in one instance but you do have to do with the other personally I find that that uh, step of swinging the gradient around takes more time uh, I mean just a little bit more time but it does take more time than simply you know starting with it creating your gradient and then just clicking to turn 90 degrees clockwise. Um, you can of course do it any way you like, but uh, 
I think that's the faster way. So we've got our barrel, and as with anything, I mean, we can go back, we can rework it, nudge all the different things one way or the other. Uh, goes for the same with the, the green of the pulse, uh, pulse rifle itself. If later on we decide, no, we want to use different colors with it, that's, uh, that's fine. We can easily do that. So, just as an example. Um, but next part, so let's, let's take a look at this casing here. So it goes over the barrel. Um, I'm really just going to be using a lot of rectangles here. And then if you've seen some of my earlier um, videos, you'll know that uh, I like to um, I like to use this feature where you can just cut into an object. So you draw an object over top, and you sort of draw away this area that you want to eventually be, be cut away from the image. So I draw this shape and I want it to cut away from this shape. So I select them both at the same time. So I'm holding down shift and I click on the casing and now I do control minus. And then that subtracts away from it. Um, again, I wanna get rid of any of these sharp edges, even if, if it's just a subtle reduction of them. Um, I think it makes sense. I mean, we're talking about a gun, so we don't want anyone getting hurt. So, we'll get rid of these sharp edges here. Okay. And so that, that's pretty close to this. It's not exact. I'm not going to do things um, the exact same way. And, um, and certainly the way I did it originally, it's not, not perfect at all. So, always room to do things a little bit differently. Um, so, with this shape right here, uh, you've got these, uh, you've got these air cooling, <laughs> some people will call it passive cooling, which sounds to me like not really cooling at all, but anyways, um, you've got sort of this air cooled, um, approach to, um, uh, to the weapon, and it might be tempting just to draw, like, your sort of dark shape here and a white shape in the background, uh, to make it look like the object is see-through but um, not really a good idea and I'll show you why so we draw our dark shape and then to make it see-through so to speak we do our our white shape and then we duplicate that a bunch of times um, I, I'm not going to, um, again, for the sake of keeping this video a little bit shorter, I'm not going to do every single one of these, but you get the idea. Um, I'd really suggest not doing it this way. The reason being, I'll show in a second here. The reason being, um, if you're working on a game or some kind of animation or something, and uh, another object needs to pass behind uh, something that has see-through through holes in it. So I put this object to the back. It should start to show up now, but it's not. So I'm just moving it behind that. So you don't really want to take the easy way out here. So similar to what I did over here, you can see how it's passing behind those um, those air holes. So um, yeah, so that's I'll show you what I do here. First step is to um, grab the dark uh, darker shape, hit Control D to duplicate, and then do. Shift select, so I've got both the dark shape and the casing selected, and control minus. Looks like nothing happened. Now we select that white shape and the dark shape, control minus. Again, looks like nothing happened. But what happened is we carved away through this, this object. So I bring it behind now, and now it starts to show. Again, won't show with these other three yet. 
So we do the same with these other three. So duplicate, select them both, control minus, white and black, control minus, duplicate, duplicate, select them both. And there we go. So now it passes behind the, the rifle. Um, so I'm not going to do the additional whatever it is, um, another four more. You get the idea from that. Um, got this little piece sort of holding the barrel down a bit, looks like. So And um, actually, let me follow my own advice here. Let's create the gradient this way and then swing it around. And we got a bit of freedom here to do, do what we want to do here. Um, throwing in a bit of color is always good even if it doesn't totally make sense. Okay, now rotate it 90 degrees. We've got that piece there. Um, we've got this, this assembly as well. Again, create that. I'm just going to create a, um, a rectangle and then from the reference I was working from you know, it's got these these little indents that I did on on this when I originally created it. So, you know, let's just draw those as much as we care to. And a little chunk missing there, so we'll there we go. Got the uh, the grenade launcher underneath. So let's just take the barrel we created earlier, duplicate it, Control D, drag it down, expand it, and then hit End on the keyboard to put it to the back. We're coming up on ten minutes. Actually, we're past ten minutes. So um, you get the idea where I'm going with this. Again, if anyone's interested, yeah, um, I'm more than happy to. Um, to create some more, some more of these, but certainly, if you get the gist um, j from what I'm doing here, um, just feel free to work away, do what you like. Uh, I'll just finish off with just a couple uh, more little bits of advice as to how I'd go about some of these. So you've got these grooves um, going along both here and with the uh, the pistol grip here, the rifle grip. Um, something I find that that's neat is, you know, it doesn't, even if you do something very, very thin like this and you put on a gradient and so it's, it's almost, you know, it's almost impossible to see at a distance, it still has an effect. Like, it's like the eye still picks it up a fair bit. And so you can make what I think are pretty, um, pretty effective grooves in in an item and so what I've done here is just had it go from uh, black to op uh, losing its opacity and now from light to losing its opacity maybe I'll just knock that down a bit so hit control G to group them and then move them across I'm not going to try to get it perfect just trying to get um, trying to get the sense of it. So, I mean, that's uh, these are probably too strong. So let's knock them back a bit. And there we go. Got our grooves in in this, and you do the same thing with the pistol. Um, so yeah. So we. I mean, if anyone's interested, I will carry on with this. Um, might carry on with it even if people aren't interested. Uh, there's a few more things to go over, certainly this assembly here. Um, but yeah, I hope this is a way to get sort of people started on this. I'd be interested in seeing uh, what you come up with. 
and uh, so drop a link um, either in the comments section and again if you want to um, to see a bit more done with this feel free to to drop a comment that way as well okay uh, thanks a lot for watching hit subscribe if you like and uh, I'll be back with another video shortly